Hey everyone, welcome to a new episode. This one is about how GMX works and its GLP token. So before you begin, I just want to explain how re regular or perpetual platforms work. So it gives a bit more context. So the idea around a perpetual platform is you're basically betting on what the price of an asset will be in the future um, without actually exchanging uh, the underlying asset. So I'll explain what that means below. Let's say you have Bob over here and you have Alice over here. So there's basically, they're going to enter into a futures market on this perpetual exchange that may be something like say uh, BTC USD. Now there's two components here. The first is uh, this is basically the contract type that they're trading with. I always get mixed up between which asset you're meant to put first or second, but that's besides the point. So in this instance, what Bob and Alice are saying is they're trading uh, or betting on what the price of Bitcoin is going to be, but they're going to settle uh, their trades in US dollars. So let's say Alice is uh, short and Bob is long. So Bob will say, I am long on ETH uh, for $100. And Alice says, whoops, uh, worth of ETH. And then uh, Alice is short for $100. Um, she's short $100 in ETH, but she's basically going to be providing uh, US dollars in some form. And because we have both the ETH and USD, we have, in this instance, 100 ETH USD contracts. Now, what really happens is that as the price of, if there's more ETH than uh, USD in the pool, then essentially longs, people like Bob will pay Alice. And there's more people short in the pool than long, then uh, the shorts pay the longs. And that's basically defined as the funding rate. And that's paid on an hourly basis. So let's say there's more Bobs than Alice's, then they might be paying like a 0.01% fee every hour. That sounds like not a lot, but this actually stacks up really quickly. Um, so yeah, like even if you did the quick math, right, go 24 times this, uh, I haven't fully done this, but let's just say it's in 20 hours, you're already looking at 0.2% fee. And uh, within 10 days, very rough math, it would basically be a 2% fee. So these things get really expensive really quickly. Um, but the upside is they, they don't have a closing date. It's uh, the casino stays on forever. So that's a very, very quick so it's oversimplification of how perpetual uh, or platforms work. Now, the key thing about, uh, I guess, GMX is understanding this concept of a GLP token. I wanna to talk about that before we even talk about GMX because it's quite central to understanding like what's really going on here. Uh, let's choose this kind of red. Not all right. Pink. Okay, uh, so GLP, what is it? Essentially think of it as this like pseudo like ETF, at least in my mind. So the idea is it's a single token called GLP that actually consists of many other tokens. Uh, so let's say in this instance, this instance, it's 50% ETH, 25% Bitcoin. Oh wow, that's pretty messed up. 25% uh, Bitcoin and then 25% USDC. So what we're basically saying here is this GLP token is a composite of these many other subtokens. Now, the way you mint uh, a GLP token is by providing one of the assets in the mix. So 
the GLP token will basically state what its target weights are. So uh, it's basically saying, hey, I want to, in this instance, it's saying I want to target 50% ETH, 25% USDC, and 25% Bitcoin. Now, the key distinction here is it's not what's saying what's actually there. It's saying what it's trying to target. So, and the reason why I make this key distinction here is every interaction about the GLP token is ensuring it stays in this composition I've kind of outlined below. So when I want to mint a GLP token, if the composite only has 45% Ether, it's going to reward me for pushing the ETH component back to where it should be. Or if there's way too much Bitcoin, I can get rewarded for pushing it down. And the way I can do this is actually by trading between these components. So the GLP almost acts like a, in my mind, like a mini decentralized exchange where uh, it's trying to target these uh, essential weights. And every time there's a swap in this index, there is a fee that basically accrues to uh, GMX and GLP holders. But I won't really get into that. Let's just know there's money that goes to the protocol and will be allocated in an appropriate way. And that's kind of why people play this game. The other very important bit to notice here, the GLP token, it isn't priced on a standard AMM model. So in a standard AMM model, if there's too much ether, then uh, you rely on arbitrators to keep it back in line with the real, I guess, prices. So if there's too much, if someone makes a trade with ETH and the amount of ETH in the pool goes down, then that means that ETH's become more scarce, which means the price of ETH has gone up, which someone sells uh, by adding more ETH into the pool. So ETH, the amount of ETH goes uh, down. So all that to say is that a regular AMM relies or, uh, yeah, a regular AMM relies on people arbing the pool out to keep the stable. In GMX with the GLP token, this is all actually Oracle based um, and specifically uh, Chainlink. That's kind of why the Link Marines love GMX. W what I realized while doing this at least. <laughs> so uh, what that means is that this basket is always going to have, or not always because there's a delay with Oracle prices, but it's going to reflect the real price um, of these underlying assets. So that means there's less impermanent loss. Uh, if these concepts are kind of like going overhead, I highly recommend watching the what is an AMM video um, and how PerpFi works because these are kind of building on like fairly sophisticated concepts. So if you don't get this, like don't stress it. Uh, it actually took me a bit of prep for this video as well to understand what's really going on here. So. Bottom line is GLP is priced by an Oracle. Cool, so now that we've got that out of the way, um, let me make sure, yep, cool, that's all the points I wanna cover on that. So now how the GMX platform itself works. So, sweet. So the GMX platform, the way that it works is going back to our old example with Bob and Alice. So Alice, when she's short, uh, no, sorry, let's talk again. There's, it's a bit different in this sense. So let's say Bob wants to go long on his hundred dollars of ETH essentially. So there's a few things that happen. First of all, uh, there is an initiation fee for uh, even trading on the platform itself. So that's like, and I'll explain why these fees add up or why they're important. So there's initiation fee for saying, I just want to be long on the platform. The second is uh, Bob is actually borrowing um, ether from the GLP index. So what that means is that 
uh, and kind of going back from before, because the protocol is trying to target a particular allocation, if there is, uh, I'm going to call this a demand fee. There's a better name for it, but I can't really remember. So if he's saying, I want to borrow ETH, and there's already less ETH in this GLP token, then he's going to pay extra. But if there's... Uh, let's make sure I got this right. If there is a lot of ETH or more ETH than is needed in this index, then he's going to pay less of a fee. So this is a variable. Whoops. This is a variable fee based on the GLP index. Cool. And the third bit is, and this is kind of like, I guess, the nice thing for traders, there's a constant, I think it's 0.01% per hour fee uh, for Bob going long, which is starkly different to the traditional model where there is, well, uh, there's a funding rate which gets paid between longs versus shorts. So this constant 0.01%, I'm not a DGEN professional trader, <laughs> so I can't say, uh, speak with confidence here, but I would assume that this constant fee is a nice feature of the platform where their costs are a lot more predictable. Of course, there is the demand fee, which could be more expensive, but once again, it's... um. It all depends on when you enter the market and how long you plan on being in the market for. So all of these three fees basically accrue to GLP uh, LPs or GLP holders and GMX holders. Of course, it favors GLP holders a lot more because they're the ones actually putting up the liquidity. And this kind of like goes back to the flip side where in the previous example where we had, uh, let me draw Alice in red. In the previous example where we had Alice uh, basically being short, this instance, Bob isn't really trading against Alice. Uh, Bob is trading against GLP holders and GLP holders are trading against Bob. So in this instance, Alice would have actually said, well, I'm gonna put up my USDC, um, to help hit the 25% target. And now I get a GLP token back. So let me just make sure this adds up. Yep, cool. So kind of like talking about the risks here. In a traditional perp model, you kind of have these two counterparties going head to head against each other. In the GLP model, the way that I kind of like think about it is you have uh, traders, and GLP holders. And the two are basically at war with each other. Not at war, but they're trading against each other. And that means that if traders win or are up, GLP holders go down or are losing money in essence because their GLP token um, is worth more, but they basically paid uh, they don't basically keep the upside of it in some essence. So that's kind of like the key things to notice here. So the next question you're probably thinking is, well, why would I be a GLP holder? Great question. And this comes back to this earlier point. The combination of these three fees is basically what makes uh, up for any loss in price that the GLP holders experience for holding the GLP asset. Um, that was actually the thing that kind of surprised me through historical back testing. And look, I haven't fully run the numbers myself, so like I can't be sure. But uh, from what I have read and researched and the fact that the platform still has people on it, um, I'm pretty sure it does work. So from that essence, that's kind of like the thing that props up GLP holders. So sure, they're actually taking on directional price risk. It's not like they kind of sit back and enjoy... Um, the earnings of their labor, but uh, they're earning all these fees in exchange. And the other thing is they're exposed to less impermanent loss because the GLP token is priced by an oracle rather than rebalancing uh, based on arbiters. So that in essence is, I guess, how GMX works. Um, it is quite a complex one, not gonna lie. It 
took me a bit of work to like research this and really understand it but uh yeah got there in the end and it also made me realize kind of how bad a lot of the explanations you see out there are um even for someone with a sophisticated knowledge base of DeFi, uh, the information there is quite sparse. So totally get why understanding something like it could be quite difficult. But anyway, um, that's really about it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, let me know if you have any things you'd like to see in the comments below. Thanks a lot, bye.